A lot of people have commented on the last video saying that if anyone could be faster than Ross in terms of solo running Fire Emblem the Sacred Stones, it would be Loot. And I'll be honest, I kind of agree with you guys. She's a self-proclaimed prodigy after all. So today I aim to put this theory to the test and find out if it's possible to beat Fire Emblem 8 using only Loot. The rules as always are simple, I have to play on hard mode, no grinding is allowed, no use of glitches or exploit is permitted, I can only take a single healing item per map in my inventory and I'm not allowed to use the convoy to grab more potions but i am allowed to use the convoy for any other purposes i'm allowed to use any extra potion found on the map either acquired from trading killing an enemy or finding it in a chest or village so quick aside before i get into the full run i'd like to take a moment to inform all of you that i've officially turned on memberships on the channel so if you care to become a member just hit that join button below members will have access to special sneak peek posts that will tease the next solo run a few days ahead of the video's release and other behind the scene goodies so now that you've all been informed of that back to the video as the first few chapters unfold in the background let's take a minute to look at loot's base stats and growth rates so loot space stats are really nothing to go crazy about. Compared to a lot of the level 1 units, they're quite respectable, sporting a high 8 in luck and a very respectable 6 in both magic and skill, and a nice 7 points in speed. So all in all, pretty good, pretty average, nothing to go crazy about. Her 2 points in defense and 17 HP are the big wards here, but it goes along with her type of character, which I would classify as your quintessential magic glass cannon. And her growths definitely come and support this description. She has a very impressive 65% magic growth, which is the highest in the game right after Murr, but we don't really count Murr because she just has highest growth everywhere. So I would say that loot has the highest magic growth in the game, but at the same time manages to have the lowest HP growth in the game with 45%. Less than 50% in growth for HP is in and she does have the second lowest defense growth in the game which wait at 15 percent that's the second lowest how the wait a damn minute who the heck is lower than oh it's of course it's null it couldn't it be anybody else other than null of course i honestly fear the day i'm gonna have to do a solo run with him all right enough dilly dallying this is about the prodigy loot after all other than her resistance growth at 40 percent which is one of the better ones in the game her other stats could be considered in like the averages i'd say or even a little bit below average like her 30 percent in skill but she is after all a damage first type of unit so you're really looking at that damage stat over pretty much anything else so some of you may have been wondering why i didn't mention her constitution yet well that's because we need to talk about it separately because it is it is something else so loot has an abysmal lowest in the game three constitution this is the lowest constitution in the entire game to give you all some context of how much of a problem that is the lightest tome in the game that she can yield has a weight of four meaning that she will spend the entirety of the early game at minus one speed because of it and since her speed growth you know isn't fantastic it'll take a few chapters to overcome that speed deficit so all in all the things you have to keep in mind for this run if loot is her strength her constitution and that's about it you know those are the two things that are going to come in the most into play all right with this out of the way as some of you may have been seeing in the background she seems to have some slight issue but nothing major in the other game as most enemies have terrible resistance stats so as well as things or going right now i do run in a pretty big oversight that i forgot to think about which a lot of people did kind of mention in the comments when they were talking about wondering how future runs with magic users would, would go and that is that the fire tome which is the only base equipment loot has in terms of damage item only has 40 uses and since she's not one-shotting anybody or getting any crits at all we're running through these uses quite quickly and we run out hmm that's an issue. You see, there's no shops to purchase tomes until chapter five, and you don't get access to the basic arm raging battle prep phase of the game until chapter four. And we're running out on chapter two, but we need to find a way to rectify this. This isn't an impossible task. We just have to be smart about how we move loot and how much tome uses we do use per map. And that we have to look at the maps ahead of us. So as we reset here, we have four maps to clear ahead of us, and only one of those is a route map, meaning that with the help of shenanigans and, you know, the helpful sacrifice of maybe certain allies we may be able to sneak loot to chapter four first so first step comes in the form of the prologue and basically on this map what you'll see is the general idea of how we'll make it through probably most of the maps and that is using Seth to block in certain units 
or act as some kind of like wall to lure in attacks. So Seth is going to lure the first fighter and block him in that area between the mountains. That allows us to rescue loot and sneaker on the other side, having to only face one of the fighter plus O'Neill, making her save two uses of the tome. Also, O'Neill doesn't attack you unless both fighters are dead. So it's kind of an easy way to get past him. A chapter one is the one where it gets a little spicy. So here what I do is I use Seth to dash all the way to Brigette and I tried a few variation of this but loot would just die if I left her unprotected because she's not a great dodge tank at this point but as you can see we hide her in that little corner between the cliff and the castle you have to take out at least three of the soldiers other than Brigette once you've built an opening you rescue loot again and move her all the way down and then you place friends on the fort to attract the reinforcement you had to equip all his items and you let him tank a few hits he should be fine but there's a chance he dies you then take your Seth back drop loot on the castle end your turn and just end the chapter by seizing the castle it's not that hard it's a little cheesy i don't love this strategy but unfortunately i didn't see any other way to go past chapter one without having to hide loot behind some of the units because she would just get overwhelmed and not dodge as well and you know relying on crazy luck like that sometimes kind of sucks and it's not always very reliable and since this map is small it's hard to use Seth to kite around a lot of the units because they kind of will always reach loot in in some way shape or form so it's it's a little it's a little bit more tricky if you guys think of another strategy let me know in the comments below so chapter two is easy it's a route map so we don't really have a choice to use loot to kill everyone we actually get zero crits on the entire match which means we get no saves on the tomes no crits at all we so we use all our tome usage that we have to use here which is about two per units i think one of them might be three but it's about two per units but you know as per usual you stand on the forest you stand on the on the forts and you just attract the enemy towards you and heal when needed you do get also a vulnerary drop on this map so healing when needed is is pretty easy okay chapter three is one where you have to move a lot of units around to make work and sometimes it doesn't work as well as you want and you, you'll see why in a few in a few minutes. So first of all, you'll want to break the wall using Seth. And then you'll trade the weapon you use on any other unit behind Seth. And you'll keep Seth there to create a buffer between the bandit and the rest of your troop. You'll want to move all your other units down below the little place where there's kind of like nothing happening outside of the fort so that they stay out of range of any enemy. So you'll want to recruit Colm so he doesn't go on a rampage by his by himself and you can kind of control what happens and a little bit more control on the map. And you'll post up Gilliam up top to where Colm spawns, always in range of that bandit that Seth is creating a buffer for. So once all your units are down and out of the way of that bandit, you will bring Seth down and allow the bandit to run after Gilliam. And the reason I take Gilliam here is just because he has a lot of HP, therefore he can survive multiple hits, so it allows us to move our, our units further before the bandit is done with him. So then you'll you, you'll move Gilliam to where exactly the stairs where Colm spawns, he's gonna go follow him. Right after that, you sneak loot, friends, and Seth into that room that the bandit was in previously. You use Seth again to break the wall, and once that's done, you trade the wall off of set using friends and bring friends all the way back down back to everybody else so gilliam will unfortunately die this his sacrifice is duly noted but you know f's in the comment for a boy gilliam who gave his life for us to succeed this solo run what's nice about this is the bandits will not move unless they are in aggro range so you can lure that one away and not have him be a problem anymore so once friends is out of the way use seth to rescue loot and place yourself against the door of the chess room and you want to drop loot on the other side always making sure that seth acts as a buffer with the two units you've trapped in that room the bandit and the archer especially the archer because you don't want to use any uses on the archer so you just you know you drop and then you use your canter to drop back one step so here we gotta get kind of lucky because if any combination of attack hits loot can die very easily but we get some major dodges and we can safely make it to the boss room with five uses of fire so we're cutting it a little close we're actually we can't get one miss or else we have to reset the map here so that's when i said it can get a little tricky earlier this is because of this moment Okay, so here, as you can see, we have about 70% chance to hit with both our first hits. We do, but when he switches to that hand axe, which he will to counterattack us, that's looking more like 64. Okay, so we have two uses left and we need to hit twice to kill him. Hopefully we don't miss here because this is cutting it a little close. This is what I meant earlier when I said things can go bad. If you miss one, you're done. 
Okay, he has one HP. He's gonna attack us again. Hopefully, we get a hit. And oh yes, we just inch it out. You you guys don't understand. I tried this like five to six times before getting it correctly, and we finally beat him. Reach chapter four and buy some more than needed fire tomes. And from here, the run gets a little simpler. Way less shenanigans. We can use the fire tomes. You can buy some, and the run gets a little easier. Once you're past that roadblock of your your, your very limited uses, uh, you're feeling a lot better. So we get to the point where loot can do what loot does best, which is merc fools. Chapter four: matter of carefully moving through the forest tiles, easily killing off all the enemies. Easily, no worries there. So we're gonna just skip right through. So chapter five isn't much harder but you need to move quickly to save all the villages because you'll want the one secret book and the draco shield but you'll also want to make sure no villages gets destroyed because if you want to grab an early guiding ring there's a condition on this map that if you save all the villages you will get an early guiding ring so it's very nice you can get an early promote and that might help us out i do a little mistake here when i first read the condition in my brain for some reason it was not clear I thought the condition was make sure no villages are destroyed, but the condition is visit all the villages. So I had ignored the armor slayer and the torch map because I was like, I don't need those. I'm going to waste some turn. So let's just go to the boss, kill them. And then I, I don't get the guiding ring, but I wasn't super paying attention because I kind of skipped fast through these. As you guys know, I play this at three times speed and you know, I just kind of skip fast to get things done. And I usually watch a stream or something while I do these runs. So I, I sometimes I am a little, uh, you know, not not super attentive so we'll get through chapter 5x and when after i save i realize oh shit i don't have this guiding ring and i'm like i don't want to try again because the start is really hard i spent about two hours on the first four levels because of how complicated it is and how much luck it comes into play so i don't rectify the situation i go forward i'm thinking that anyways not getting that early guiding ring shouldn't affect our time too much it's gonna suck we're gonna get one on chapter 10 when we kill pablo so in like five chapters we'll have to play a couple of chapters as mage loot level 20 personally you know i was like eh, it's not that bad it's not worth all my it's not worth sinking time back into the start of the game just for this so i kind of just go with it and move on so chapter six comes around and as it rolls in the background we hit level 20 so let's talk about it overall i'd say we have about an average loot here considering everything our hp is a few points above where it should be with 27 over 25 our strength is in the average of 19 our skill is technically in the average considering we use a secret book we have way better speed than we should given that we're at 18 and she should average around 15 but on the other hand our luck is almost four points lower than where it should be our defense and res are looking good as we have five more points in defense than we should which is more three given we use the draco shield but we traded off two points in res so overall we're looking pretty average which is good you want to look at least average you don't want to look below average you want to look at least average if you get better you get better if you don't that's too bad so i don't see anything worrisome here i think we're on the right track to have good things happen in the future so there isn't much to talk about for loot for a little bit given again that every enemy is very low res and you're if you're using terrain properly loot becomes a pretty good dodge tank you know she's pretty safe overall her weakness kind of shows in her low defense as you'll see a lot of enemies don't have a lot of chance of hitting her if you move her properly if they do they take off about like a third to sometimes half her hp so it can be quite worrisome but i end up being quite quite lucky generally and avoiding the worst of it things that are important about chapter eight you'll have to grab the angelic rope in the chest to the right that's the big one you want to get that extra hp so once you save ephraim screw again by going to the left before the cavaliers come and reinforce and become a problem you'll go back to the right pick up the chest on the right and then move directly to lord tirado i kind of again rushed a boss room like i did with ross but with way less of a threat looming over me as the mages don't do as much to loot as they did to ross and tirado is kind of a joke overall because again is low resistance becomes higher saving grace and here we get to the route split so again we're taking erica's route because to make these runs happen we always switch out erica for loot so the game considers loot as erica so if we want to keep the run going we gotta go with erica's route and it also helps us compare all the routes and see you know which character is better than the others so chapter 9 and 10 are the same pretty easy challenges it's always a question of moving through the forest taking your time because with these low defense units you just to want to make sure you dodge properly and loot will kind of just do very good in terms of damage two shot to one shot pretty 
much everybody. And if you keep a fire tome equipped on her, you're generally going to be dodgy enough to help yourself out. You can lose a map by an unlucky hit. It does happen. So be careful. It happened to me on chapter and nine. I had to do a game over at some point because I ran out of potions because I tried to rush the boss and then not take care of just moving into the forest. But when you move to the forest, like in my second time, everything went well. So I'll run chapter 10 in the background as we discuss the class change coming up since Pablo drops this guiding ring that we, we, we desperately need. Loot is probably one of the most interesting class changes for this challenge because I'm pretty sure Mage Knight is the mostly recommended one for loot generally in a normal run and is genuinely a good option for her. So let's look at it. You lose out on a few defensive stats in terms of the promo itself. However, you do get a huge boost in constitution, like huge, which should make her life a lot easier with heavier tomes, which is a problem. Genuinely a problem you have with this character is her low constitution. Not to mention the high movement from being mounted, which is super helpful. I haven't tried a mounted unit yet, so I, I kind of want to do that. But the thing is with these solo runs, you have to be careful. At first glance, yes, Mage Knight seems very attractive, but it might not be the preferred selection here for a solo run. So you do get the versatility from Sage getting the access to light magic, which is actually pretty good in this game considering the later stages of the game. But other than that, there doesn't seem to be a lot of advantages to going Sage. Well, not at first glance. You have to look a little deeper. There's something not so obvious giving you an advantage, and it's not in a hidden skill or whatever. It's just that in Fire Emblem, different classes have different stat caps, meaning that depending on which class you have, your max cap for a certain skill or a certain stat might be higher or lower. For loot, it actually becomes a significant point of concern because the Mage Knight gets nice con nice movement bonuses but the max amount of point you can get in magic is 25 and remember we're already at 19 so that's six more points than we can get and loot is a 65 percent growth rate in magic 25 isn't bad but it isn't great while the sage on the other end maxes out at 30 magic points which that is great and that's the same thing for skill and speed where the mage knight gets 24 and 25 respectively and the sage gets 28 and 26 respectively this isn't significant at all for skill as loot is very little odds to even come close to maxing that out. But for speed, you get closer. On the other hand, the Mage Knight has higher caps in both defense and resistance. But for this run, they're barely significant as there's very little chance you'll have a max defense loot and a um, res might come close, but res isn't as mandatory I found. So usually I have the tendency to run loot as a Mage Knight in my runs. You know, as I said before, I genuinely think it's a really good option for her, but I think it's only a good option if you're surrounded by a team. I think if you go by a solo run, which is the way we're doing the game, if she isn't surrounded by others, she needs as much damage as she can muster because the Demon King will not be any joke at the end of the game. He has very high stats. We always have to think about that guy, but you have to always remember you have to be able to take him on one on one. So. I decide to go for the sage. As the next few chapters will play in the background, and you'll see that loot doesn't joke around. She is doing a lot of damage. There is something I want to touch on, and that is the legendary weapons. So I usually don't talk about them too much because it never really becomes a point of contention. But for loot this time around, it will because somehow I didn't S rank my animal magic by the time I got to promo, which means I get to choose between S ranking anima because in this game, when you have multiple weapon affinities, you only S rank a single one of them, which means you only get to pick one legendary item because they are all as rank weapons. So loot will have access to either Evaldi or Excalibur. Evaldi being the light tome, Excalibur being the anima tome. With them comparing both tomes side by side, Excalibur does seem to come out on top. It being a little stronger and having a tiny bit more crit chance, but it is heavier by three from Evaldi, which is the lighter tome. Evaldi does grant foot plus five defense as a skill, while Excalibur grants plus five speed. So here I do decide to go with Evaldi. And let me give you my thought process behind it at the time as I was doing the run. So I'm thinking that one damage might not make a huge difference in the long haul. One point I think will be fine at the end of the day. Loot skill will always remain quite low and the Demon King usually has a high amount of luck. So critting as a strategy I think here is pretty much out of the question for that last fight. We're going to have to go with pure raw power. So at the end of the day why I chose Evaldi is because of the extra bonus. So in my head loot will double the end boss no matter what tome we pick. So the plus 5 speed isn't that necessary. So I do go with Evaldi for the plus five defense because i'm thinking if i can tank at least an, an extra hit so maybe we can rely less on dodge luck and just you know 
on stats to end the final boss but we'll get to that point when we get to that point so that's how i approach it hold on to the comments before you start telling me i'm wrong we'll get to the end of the game you'll see what happens it's quite interesting so now that this is out of the way let's get back to the run itself as it seems to be customary with these runs the mid game was going to be pretty easy for loot as it was with pretty much every other character we've done so far so on chapter 11 we'll grab the secret book on the chest on the right side of the fort we'll also be recruiting ewan on the following chapter for his energy ring even though technically loot should not have a problem maxing it out as we saw in the ross run you can never be too safe sometimes things happen and don't go your way you don't get the levels you need so we're gonna be picking it up either way but overall things should be good on chapter 13 which once again we finish in record time we'll take the speed wing off amelia because while loot can come close to maxing out her speed there is a chance it doesn't go our way so taking the speed wing can ensure that really which we kind of want that speed maxed out and we'll make quick work of chapter 14 even Carlisle was sometimes an issue here really won't be a roadblock in any way shape or form i won't actually pick up the extra energy ring because i'm pretty positive we have insurance with only the one i know it's unsafe but i'm really trying to shave down turns here and i'm our growth is looking pretty good on terms of strength and now we start chapter 15 which is always an interesting one so i always like to take a little bit of time to talk about it because it's probably one of the most interesting chapters so i end up starting off by going off to calyx side of the map for no particular reason other than we can quickly save do so if things go awry so it's just a quicker way to get there but that's a little bit of an oversight that i made again another little mistake i make in this run because the right thing to do would have been to go to the right side of the map and pick up the metastone especially given the fact that we used a guiding ring late in the game we could have gotten extra growth by picking up the metastone early our loot is currently only around level 13 which would have given us plenty of levels to get extra points and growth but at the end of the day i end up making an even bigger mistake so i temporarily lose my entire mind and forget the metastone entirely uh so you'll see me in this map i'll pick up the body ring i'll pick up the swift soul but for some ungodly reason i never pick up the metastome i don't know why i think i completely forgot about it you know as i said sometimes i'm distracted when i do these runs and just small details slip out of my mind so it's another mistake for the mistake board i think we're like at three right now anywho we get the calyx out of the map and loot will do very good unlike our good friend Nal, who will dodge he actually dodges there wow impressive very oh no forget about that he got critted into non-existence bye bye no bye bye so as is customary i do pick up ephraim with Dusel. the reason being if ephraim dies we get a game over and Dusel can be a good protection for him and we start making our way to the village but i forget about Dusel. so he's not moving on the village he gets no extra avoid no extra defense so i have to make a quick rescue so i alter my plans i don't go for calic right away i head the hell down and i save Dusel because the mages can actually kind of do a lot of damage to him but we end up cleaning up pretty much the entire map beyond that pick up the swift soul and the body ring as i said at least i don't forget those and we kill valter and calic with no particular worry you know once again there is a lot of low res units in these moments in the game that makes this extremely easy for us so chapter 16 is well easy the one roadblock here usually are the long range sages you know usually units have very low res they don't really dodge them very well and they can get hit by massive hits well loot's in a pretty good position on that end so these sages aren't as problematic let's say and at this point in the game loot because of her speed being good has become quite Quite a decent dodge tank so we end up rushing to the talisman on the right side chest of the map the top right side where the talisman is and then we make our way directly to orson and we do take a risk considering orson and the great knights can get us to relatively low hp by just hitting us once and they have a relatively high hit chance to do that but we get a very nice crit which avoids us any sort of trouble and we move on to chapter 17. so chapter 17 is laughably easy given the use of light magic and the map condition being to kill leon you can almost rush up to him in like three turns and he will basically kind of unalive himself on you it's pretty great you know we get the weapon advantage and you attack him once and you kind of just destroy him the, the the shamans in front don't do much because once again our light magic is very good against it so you know kind of in the in the bag okay so chapter 18 or our old nemesis on on some characters for those who've watched erica and Ra's videos you know about the trials and tribulation that has to go with this chapter but this time this time it's a very very different story we get we get our redemption arc here this this is the chapter 
chapter 18 redemption arc. See, the Gorgon's magic is considered dark magic. And we have a pretty good light user with loot S ranking light magic. And even then, even if it was only A rank, it would probably do also very good. We just roll through the map. Nothing can basically hit us. Stone is almost 0% most time to hit us. And most of the attack don't do that much damage. We have a very favorable hit to dodge ratio on them. There is no trials and tribulation. We have overcome that. Thank you to loot. For once, we're going to get an easy map 18. So before we get to chapter 19, I have to preface by saying, remember that loot is extremely low constitution, right? Well, even with a body ring, we run into an issue. So some of you guys know the strategy is usually you pick up Mansell and you sit on the throne and you wait out the chapter. It's the easiest way because the fog of war makes it kind of hard to get the Riev to take him out. There's a lot of soldiers that will just swarm you. They quickly get to the throne room, so it's a little harder to kind of get there. But loot can't rescue Mansell. Loot's too weak. She can't pick him up. I And I honestly think he, she's the only character who might not be able to pick him up. Well, I guess it's time to improvise on the fly, folks. So our only de solution is to de defeat Reef before the enemy units swarm Mansell, which is usually around turn four. So we don't have a lot of leeway. And also, we have to get there through the dark. So, you know, let, let's try to get lucky. <laughs> and I do get lucky, as you're seeing right now, because I don't hit anything on the way there. I just kind of roll through and just kind of walk right past. And then I hit Reef. Once again, loot shows that she is a prodigy and absolutely ends him handily. No problem. She, she, she is the quintessential glass cannon again. She just destroy things. And we also get a nice aura tome, which I think may come in handy later. So, all right, we are finally in the end stretch here. Chapter 20. It shouldn't be too rough as chapter 20 usually is. It's a pretty big walk in the park. Usually it takes just some time because you have swarm of enemies, but the forest makes it easy to dodge most things. Most of the enemies aren't extremely extremely strong so it's it's not that big of a problem usually the big problem comes in the form of the boss and same thing for loot here she is no different the challenge only shows up at the end reeve number two get out of the way and more of a whoa he'll hit pretty hard because he has the penetration and loot doesn't have that much hp all right so let's pull out evaldi see how that does see that does extremely well very easy we'll just take him out in two hits he's gonna hit us but i'm not too worried about anything that happens besides yeah as as planning he hits us we take him out See, the eyes don't do much damage. As you can see, not a lot of hit rate. 17% chance will be just fine. Zero damage. So we get that good uh, weapon advantage here. We're just going to eat the Cs. But, you know, you will get swarmed uh, after you kill Morva. All right, you guys, moving along. Yeah, so we dodge this. Again, even the non-eye monsters still have 18 chance to hit. That's not that much. 20% sure we got hit. This might be bad. Oh, we're going to be fine. We're going to be just Okay, so we got hit by 24% chance. I mean, at some point, luck has to catch up to us. Okay, so here we get extremely unlucky. Let's try this again. Let's be a little safer. Okay, so we're going to cut back to Morva. We're going to take a safer approach, moving to the right of the forest, take on all the enemies that can actually attack you, and then moving up with Vivaldi and finishing the job after just being a little safer. Don't don't be like me. Be safe. I keep taking these risks and getting bit. Here, we don't get bit. Everything goes fine. Moving on to the final chapter. I'm not sure how difficult it will be, but as Per usual, there are about three-ish roadblocks here. I'm talking about the first zombie dragon, Leon, and then the demon king. So we'll start by cleaning out the first wave of enemies and taking out their gorgons on the right side of the room in order to pick up the angelic cloak. That's very important. You're going to up your HP to around 50. The zombie dragon will be a quick kill using a Valdi, but much like Morva did, it'll do a lot of damage. We'll have to use one of our elixirs here, but it was kind of planned. It was kind of what I was expecting to happen. And of course, we'll be fine from the oncoming gargoyle onslaught you know we might take a hit here and there but nothing substantial here i try a new strategy usually i go around from the right side to approach uh leon but this time around i try to go straight down mid i try to run it down the middle and maybe i over evaluate my ability to dodge but i do the very real mistake of letting my light tome break and the second one i had equipped was an animatome and the gorgon are gonna rail me there you know they ha they do have that big weapon advantage when you're with animal magic i take a quite a bit of damage and as you'd expect 
Yeah, we did put ourselves in the worst position. You know, let's give it another shot. So I take a different angle this time. I approach the map from the left side. Because if you didn't know, once you approach the map from the left side, it spawns demon eyes on the right. But if you approach the map from the right side, it spawns gargoyle on the left side. And loot having light magic and having high res, I'm thinking to myself, why not approach from the left side? We do get less chance of getting hit. We put the chances on our side. The math just works. But I make a little mistake here. I forget that on the left side, there's also the evil doggos. And those, those are worse than anything that can spawn when you go from the right side. The dogs are too fast and will usually hit you. And those are hits you don't want to take if you want to conserve as many potions as possible. So technically approaching it from the right side who has the centaur is much better than the left side even with loot because of the speed problem. The dogs hit a lot and when they're in the higher form i should say they do a lot more damage but overall we're fine we end up taking out everybody it's not a huge problem so we'll move on to approaching leo and since we have an advantage here i will approach by taking out all the gorgons one by one because they're not too much of a problem and by just taking him out i kind of open the field up to myself to make things a little easier on myself Okay, so as we take down the last Gorgon, which was actually a risk to take because that's 37% chance to hit, we approach Leon with Aura, actually. We will try a Valdi here, but, you know, we still take a lot of damage. At 35 is kind of scary. So we'll move on to Aura, and the reason being is the high crit chance. I will settle on Aura. I will enemy phase, allow him to attack me. I could have pure water there, but I didn't think about it at the time because I'm fishing for a crit here. What I'm doing is I'm going to get hit by that 35. I'm going to have to heal, but I'm fishing for a crit. 20% chance is good enough to maybe get one here and there we don't get one there but what we're gonna do here is we'll equip evaldi because we're gonna actually be looking for the higher damage on the second try because we were fishing with the crit at first it didn't work here i know that if i hit three evaldis i kill leon so i'll hit two this time and then i'll be able to kill him on my face next turn it's just all thought out unless we get a crit we end up dodging which doesn't matter here but we still end up dodging which is pretty nice we'll like that a little bit earlier saving an elixir we take care of leon not too much of an issue as you can see having the light tome advantage really does help here he's still very strong and very hard for us but we move on to the demon king first try okay let's see how much we do let's check this out evaldi you know what that's pretty good two times 23 93 percent chance to hit we're gonna hit however something that's kind of scary here is he two shots us so if we hit him if he hits us and you know we are down to 21 so he's gonna kill us if he attacks next turn he won't because he always spawns monsters but we get a pretty good spread of monsters no dragon here so that's pretty positive for us but the problem is that 63 percent chance to hit hopefully we dodge here and we can also dodge the next one it's, ugh, okay so as you can see, we're going to be running into a problem here. We'll give it another attempt. All right, we get to the next Leon fight and we end up equipping Aura again. Uh, we kill the Gorgon. We end up same strategy again. You know, we're looking for the crit. We kill the Gorgon just to get less attacks on us to up our chances of survival. And I forgot about the dogs. I approached from the right side this time and I forgot the dogs move a lot, but we get a crit. We kill it. Please doesn't kill us here. Okay, we are almost in range. That's four HP. Anything else that touches us kills us here. So let's hope. Oh, we get a lucky crit, which is actually very good because then we just have to sit there and heal um we were actually smart there because there's nothing that can reach us because we did kill all the long range gorgons and all the other gorgons won't move we got get lucky but you know it's it was kind of technically a little bit lucky so we're going to still equip aura here to keep as many evaldi uses as possible heal up and you know there's no suspense here we have 100 percent chance to hit he's gonna attack twice he doesn't have a chance to crit this is this is a win in my book we, we get to kill him get to beat him and move on to our second try which is actually the next time up after just the last time so you know twice in a row we get to the boss uh so let's see how it goes this time hopefully just a little better all right let's approach him let's see wait a minute wait what don't... what okay so here we're not doubling him as you can see I'm, I'm extremely confused you can see in the recording i'm like looking at stats and i'm thinking things like i doubled last time and i don't double this time well before i explain what's going on because i did look it up now i'll give you all a little spoiler here, here this isn't the time i beat him and it's not necessarily because i can't double him that has something to do with it but my man doesn't spawn one zombie dragon doesn't spawn two zombie dragons does not spawn three zombie dragon but this mfr spawns four zombie dragon even if i wanted to beat this guy this was an impossible problem. 
So I kind of gave up on that one. I kind of just like go, you know what? Let's move on to the next one. This this is an L. Anytime if any character of the Demon King spawns like four or three zombie dragon, you're kind of just like looking at a, at a big fat L down the line, to be fair. So let me get back to the video and as some of my other attempts play in the background, let me explain what is going on here. And at the same time, I'll be taking a minute to talk about our level 20 loot. And that's not because I forgot. That's because I was keeping it for this moment specifically because it kind of plays into our explanation. So let's start by looking at our level 20 loot there's nothing crazy going on here everything is where you'd expect it to be we're maxed out on magic which is expected our skill is low but you you were expecting that at 18 even with the two secret books so technically it's a little low but it's fine i in my book that's fine we maxed our speed our luck is a little below average considering you use a goddess icon but it's on the average technically so i'm not too worried about that our defense is doing really good with 16 plus the five that we get from evaldi our res didn't get the same love, but it doesn't really matter against the Demon King because he uses physical damage. So I'd say all in all, we have a pretty average loot, which is kind of what you're looking for. So what's the problem? So to answer that question, we're gonna have to look at the Demon King's stats. So on hard mode, the Demon King is somewhat variable stats, meaning that most of his stats have the possibility of either being on the low end or the high end. So the stat that matters here is speed. When it comes to speed, you can either have 18 or 19 speed. So we have 26 speed. We should be doubling, but we didn't factor in weapon weight. See, as we briefly touched upon earlier, in the video if your weapon weight is above your con you are penalized on your speed for every point above and even with a body ring loot only hits about six constitution so our abysmal con is the problem here so here the calculation we have to do is we have to first of all take away evaldi's weight minus loot's con so 10 weight for evaldi loot's con is six we end up with minus four to our speed so our speed is actually 22. loot will only double when formortis has a low roll meaning that only when he has 18 speed Speed, will she double anytime he gets 19 we're kind of screwed it is really bad because it's kind of a coin toss whether or not it will happen on a low or a high roll you can't even control that in any way shape or form and to add to our bad luck that also applies to his resistance he can either have 25 or 26 resistance which is the difference for loot and evaldi between doing 23 damage and 24 and if you do the calculation this boss is 120 hp meaning that the difference between 23 and 24 is five to six hit that that one damage if you guys remember earlier i mentioned excalibur i said that one damage won't make a difference well that statement <laughs> comes and bite us in the butt because that one damage is the difference between five hits or six hits and as you saw we can't crit him we have a zero percent chance to crit against him so we have to rely on a very high amount of luck especially also given the fact that he has 60 percent chance to hit us the odds are literally stacked all against us someone could do the math of what this amounts to in terms of what are our chances to beat this game in our current current state i haven't done them i've just played five hours of this one level trying over and over and over and over again and failing that's what i did so what's our play here because i don't want to end on this i don't like to call it quits i like to finish what i start so i want to finish this so i have a couple of options ahead of me either i keep trying and go insane <laughs> i'm not interested in that but there is another way because as i just said we messed up picking Evaldi over Excalibur. I made another mistake. I made about four or five mistakes total in this run. And I didn't think any of them were going to be run ending. Well, it turns out one of them was. It wasn't the guiding ring. It wasn't forgetting the Metastome. It wasn't any of that. It was entirely picking the wrong S rank magic. Not that Evaldi is bad. In my brain, we were always going to double no matter what. I never thought doubling was out of the question. I always thought we were going to double. For me, that was a given. I didn't check the Demon King stat before starting this. And Excalibur's passive plus five speed it gives would guarantee us higher avoid rates because your speed would be higher but since that hadn't come to my mind then and there we're a little past that we can't make loot an s rank anima magic it's not something you can flip in this game it doesn't work that way but coming to this realization doesn't change the fact that we're stuck here but i decide to do something i've never done at this point in a run and reset the entire thing at some point you have to know when to cut your losses and at this point i'm like you know what this is not gonna work i will spend weeks on this if i just keep trying 
the, the odds are uh, probably worse than winning the lottery. Let me just help my odds a little bit. But in the spirit of not wasting all your time, because this video has been running on for quite a while at this point, I'll give you a quick recap and we're going to get to the end of the game. So the main thing I did is I make sure I picked up the guiding ring on chapter five and promo as early as possible, which as you may be seeing on the screen right now, this probably cost me a lot of time in the past run because loot is actually doing so much work right now early on being promoted. I also make sure I get my S rank in Anima, of course, because now the plan is to try the Excalibur and see if that changes enough to help us out. But I still make sure I get my A rank in Light Magic because Leon is going to be a problem and you need the Aura spell book either way. So you need to get that. But for the for our S rank, we want Excalibur. Let's get to chapter 20 and talk about our new loot. Also, I take a different route here. I go from the bottom on chapter 20 instead of going from the top. And maybe I think that also saves me a lot of time because I get to skip a lot of enemy. So let's talk about new loot as she's ca now called new loot. <laughs> Better loot, I should say, because take a look at those stats. Everything is pretty much the same except two major things. Our luck is so damn good. It's maxed out. And our res too. Res doesn't matter too much. It matters for Leon, but either way, we'll be fine. At the end of the day, things actually went our way. I guess, I guess we could have gotten better growth loot and we, we you know, that, that's what happened here. So let's see what that ends up giving us. Okay. So this time I'm a little less safe. I don't clear out all the Gorgons like I did last time. So I go straight for Leon. I equip the Aura th Tome. Something I do that I don't do before is I use a pure water. That will allow me to actually tank an extra hit from Leon because his damage is going to go down. So here he attacks us and then you see 22. Also 65 chance to hit, which means that the luck we have does affect our dodge, which is a good sign for later on. We don't get the crits we want, but you know, the Gorgons are all going to attack us. I'm feeling okay. I'm feeling pretty good. It's Especially given the fact that Leon can only do 22 damage to us with the pure water equip. And that's kind of easing my mind. So here I don't use any items. I just use my pure water. Don't use any elixirs. And I decide to take another hit from him. Hopefully, once again, gain a crit. If he hits me, it's fine. I'll survive. If we get hit by something else, though, that's bad. We don't get the crit we want. 22 HP. Even if that hits us, we're fine. We do have to use the potion here just in case we get hit. It sucks. I would have liked to be able to just take him out uh, with a crit or something. Anyways, we're going to be heading in the boss fight with two elixirs, which is generally pretty favorable, I would say. All right. Now this is our litmus test. This is the moment. This is is the time and his speed doesn't matter here see we do 26 times two and our avoid pretty much went down by about 10 he hits us harder but that actually doesn't matter and we dodge <laughs> that actually doesn't matter because we he spawns two two zombie dragons okay well hopefully that's still fine but we dropped his hit rate a lot because of our luck our luck is higher our speed is higher those things do affect hit rate and it comes and help us out even a little bit we even get a four percent crit now so maybe we do end up getting extremely lucky and things will, i mean dodge again okay i was expecting to like maybe die here and move on but this might be our chance to win a Okay, we do get hit here, but the rest should be fine, right? Oh, wait, I'm fearing the dragon, maybe. This guy's fine. He's going to hit us. We're going to kill him. Move on. Okay, show me the dragon. Okay, we can dodge this. We oh, man. Okay, that was so close. Okay, to be fair, compared to any of the other runs we did in the last time, that was super close. Let's skip all the way back ahead and try this one more time. And believe it or not, this time is literally the next time after. So we get to him again, next try, nothing in our way. The zombie dragon, not too much of a roadblock. Leon, not too much of a roadblock. Let's see what happens here. Low side here, we get 25 damage into 26, but it's still good. 54% chance to hit on us. That's actually, I think 2% better than last time for, for a way. You see, you can see me trying tomes here, but we all know where I'm gonna land. I'm gonna land on Excalibur. It is the only way to do this. I have a feeling this might be the time. So let's let's attack him. No crits. We do the damage to him. We get a dodge. We get a dodge. Okay, that's a really good start. Only three more hits and we win. Okay, only one zombie dragon. Not that bad. That is extremely manageable. What I'm going to do here, my thought process, I am going to move out of the zombie dragon's attack range because I don't want him to attack me. I do want to bait the demon king away from him so that I can try to fight him one on one. So I end up attacking this eye with the thunder tome. The reason being is that it's going to give me the highest possible avoid when he's going to attack me. I can't really counter him, but it does drop him to 50% chance and I dodge again. Okay, the rest should be, I do dodge a 60% chance, but my goal here is just to take out his many people around him as possible uh staying away from the zombie dragon and trying to you know 
fight back a little so we do have thunder to help us dodge a little bit because it, it you know we really want to make sure we get the best avoid when we're not being able to you know counter attack or when we're not in a position we're trying to do something else i'm trying to be a little bit more strategic here moving away from problematic situations so we end up taking out the rest of his crew he's going to attack us again here and oh he hits this time but nothing else can hurt us so it's going to be a matter of healing for us using an elixir after that because you know maybe i guess the spider could have hit the five percent chance but i'm not too worried about that and generally what's left is gonna be fine so here i will heal i will use an elixir you know we'll end the turn on that we'll hope to dodge the next time take out the spider so that it's out of our way so we can dodge this time we do dodge this is amazing and we kill the spider okay okay ephraim please don't die this is it this is the time we gotta hit him gotta stay out of this guy's range and we gotta hit him three times okay we can do it here you do 54 percent chance one okay dodge dodge oh we get hit okay it's okay we still have another chance when he's gonna counter attack so let's end the turn there's nothing we can do for ephraim come on come on it's the time come on do it do it mm. again once more we are one hit off this is annoying but you can see that my chances are much better the reset was the best thing i could do for this part of the game all right so here we take out our good friend leon again and believe it or not again it's the third time in a row of Excalibur. This is our third time with Excalibur, and we make it back to the boss. So, again, it's just this reminder that maybe the better stats are helping out a little bit here because we make it way more consistently back. All right, let's see what happens here. This has got to be here. We got to do it this time. I don't want to try this again more. Okay, so 54% chance to dodge. Got Excalibur. We got to hit five times. That's one, baby. He hits us. Oh, that's not a good start at all. Oh, no. Okay. So he's going to spawn a bunch of guys and we get no zombie dragons. That is actually great. So here I will adjust my strategy a little bit. I'm looking around. I'm a little scared. I will go out of his range of attack to heal because he won't be doing much. I realize at this point that he doesn't do much if you're out of his range of attack. So it allows us a safe kind of like out to heal. So what I do here is I go out of the range and I will equip thunder again. I also bring on the um, Uplin guard here. The reason I take on the hoopla guard is because the skeleton ahead of me has a killing edge and i don't want to get crit by accident so i take out the open guard and we will equip fire actually and then heal up just in case again we get hit by something we don't like we should be fine but the point was to get out of his range to heal and then get back in and attack him we also want to make sure we keep e from out of the way but i i think he'll be fine so they're all gonna attack us they're not gonna do much honestly i'm not worried about anything else other than than big demon king over there look at me see this guy had like nine damage so with the crit it would have been bad so hooplin guard was a good idea we end up dodging a little doggy boy that's good okay rune sword is fine you know again not a huge problem on any of these guys i'll just take him out one by one and the centaur is a long bow but that's not a problem so I, I will wait out of his range again the reason being i want to take out more enemies i want to make sure i have a clear path to him because right now is technically it's blocked i can't get to him so i don't want to take any chances it's now or never everybody it's now or never let's go let's see it's start time to shine excalibur gotta hit him we gotta hit him three times okay so let's go with number one yes okay what's gonna happen here we dodge holy crap wait wait that means we did it <gasps> even if he hits us it doesn't matter <gasps> oh my god we did it again <laughs> come on loot take him out take him out as you can see i'm kind of pausing there because i am not believing it it took me a minute to kind of realize what was happening but we do take out fomortis ah oh. This win was extremely cathartic for me, by the way. And you'll see me stuck on this screen for a little bit because I'm kind of like, I got up out of my chair and I started celebrating around my office because, oh my God, I could not believe we managed to beat this guy in three turns after we did the switch. So something to take away from this is sometimes you theory craft a little bit in your head and you kind of cook too much, you know? You're kind of cooking too much and you end up making mistakes. You end up thinking too much. Instead of going with the obvious answer, which was Excalibur, I thought Evaldi would be it. I, I was trying to theory craft a little too hard and I ended up burning myself. My God, I am... 
even re-watching it right now, I'm I'm beyond impressed by this run. I'm so happy we might managed to do it. I was thinking loot would be easier on the last boss, personally, but she did have such a good run throughout the whole thing. It wasn't even a problem. Despite all the trials and tribulation, this was actually an extremely interesting run. But let's look at the stats. Honestly, I'm impressed. Loot completes this in 376 turns, which is extremely impressive, given that Ross did it in like 450 or something like that. She also also does it in seven hours and 54 minutes which is two less hours than ross did and that is considering all the shenanigans you have to do at the start this is an insane number and to show you guys how much the early class change ended up mattering let me give you a side by side of our final time which is seven hours and 44 minutes and what the time was at chapter 21 at the final chapter on the previous loot who was using Evaldi. we finished the game with 20 about 25 minutes in hand this loot was insane. So promoting early actually mattered way more than I thought it would. So I'm going to have to put loot at number one. I don't have a choice here. I have to put loot at number one on the tier list. She did so much better despite the reset, despite the game overs at the end, despite the tribulation with Form Formortis. You know, when you do the correct thing and it's not, you know, my mistake causing the run to end, you end up realizing that, you know, she really did have an easier time than Ross. So I want to touch on something very briefly here. A lot of you ask for a game over counter or some sort of a reset counter to add to the tier list. I decided not to do that right away because I'm not sure how it would come and factor in and how to integrate it properly and calculate that properly. The game over counter is probably never going to happen because counting every game over is really tough, especially on the last map because there's a lot of trial and errors and trying things out. And there's a lot of stupid game overs that happen because I don't think about something. I, I'm watching a stream at the same time and make a, you know, an attention mistake. So we're not going to do that. The game over counter is not going to happen, but I'm I'm thinking of maybe adding a reset counter because it's easier to track but my one problem with a reset counter is how do i gauge that into how a character did because some resets as you can see are kind of influenced by context there's a lot that goes in there so i want to leave it up to you guys let me know in the comment section below what do you think about adding a reset counter and how much value should i ascribe to it when ranking the characters or let me know if you think the current time slash turn format is perfect as is all right folks that's gonna be enough for me i kept you guys for a long time for this video tell me what you thought about the video don't forget to drop a big thumbs up if you enjoyed and subscribe if you want to see more content like this i've been having a blast doing them they take me a while i know it takes like a month to get one out but i think it's worth it i think you know the month of work is worth the video every time at least in my opinion hopefully you guys feel the same way and yeah consider joining if you enjoy this kind of stuff and you want behind the scenes and you want to help me support me consider joining as a member other than that i'll see you guys in the next video or next stream over here on the channel keep an eye on everything going on i'll keep you you guys updated through community posts love you all very much have yourself a great rest of your day week month however long it takes for us to see each other again and i'll catch you guys in the next video Bye bye